Well, here we are in the headquarters of the Sainsbury Institute for the Study of Japanese Arts and Cultures in the beautiful historic surroundings of the Cathedral Close in the middle of the city of Norwich. And in this room, this is where we house the library of the Norfolk and Norwich Archaeological Society. And the fact that we have the library here um, is testament to how seriously we take our developing the relationships between Japanese and British archaeology. And we've been able to develop those um, initiatives through our Centre for Archaeology and Heritage here at the Sainsbury Institute. We established the centre back in 2011 um, after we had organised a couple of exhibitions about prehistoric Japanese figurines, one at the British Museum, The Power of Dogu, which was held in 2009, and then a further exhibition, which was a comparative exhibition comparing Japanese prehistoric figurines with some of their European Neolithic cousins, um, an exhibition called Unearthed, which we held at the Sainsbury Centre for Visual Arts um, at the University of East Anglia in the summer of 2010. So, a couple of years ago, we were approached by Hitachi of Europe and Hitachi Solutions, who became interested in the projects that we were running in Japanese archaeology. And they were very keen to help us through their corporate social responsibility program to see if we could generate some new audiences for Japanese archaeology around the world. And as a result of those discussions, we created something called the Online Resource for Japanese Archaeology and Cultural Heritage, which is really designed with um, school children in mind, secondary school children here in the UK. That was our first foray really into the digital world of archaeology and we've been able to build on that through another series of online programs through which we were able to introduce British archaeology and cultural heritage, some of the highlights of that, um, to Japanese university students through a series of online programs which we ran in conjunction with a summer program um, with the Faculty of Humanities at the University of Tokyo in Japan. And uh, from a couple of years ago, we've been sending students from Europe to take part in a summer program over there, uh, where they spend two weeks visiting sites and museums and having lectures from uh, distinguished Japanese specialists. And then they also have the opportunity to take part in some archaeological work up in the north of Japan. And in return for that, this February, we had um, the first visit by some Japanese students to England on what we call our winter program in British archaeology and cultural heritage. And they came having seen these online programs. So they were already prepared to meet many of the specialists that they were going to be encountering here and also seeing some of the material that they were able to study here and that we were able to introduce them to. Ever since the Sainsbury Institute was established in 1999, we've worked hard to foster good connections with our local community through a series of outreach and engagement programmes. Our flagship programme at the Sainsbury Institute is what we call our Third Thursday Lectures. And when every third Thursday of the month we bring an eminent scholar to come and introduce an aspect of Japanese arts or cultures. And these talks have taken on a life of their own and we've been delighted with the warm reception that Japanese arts and cultures now receives in Norwich. Building on those programmes and on those community links, over the last few years we've been fostering connections between the town of Thetford um, which is famous for its Neolithic flint mines at Grimes Graves, and a small town in central Japan called Nagawamachi, which is home to some of the most spectacular obsidian mines, prehistoric obsidian mines in Japan. And the last summer, we saw a visit from something called the Teenage History Club from the Ancient House Museum in Thetford. We were able to make a visit to Japan to take part in their obsidian festival which is now an international obsidian festival as a result of that, with the support of the Daiwa Anglo-Japanese Foundation. And this summer, with the support of the Toshiba International Foundation, we were able to welcome 16 young obsidian ambassadors 
uh, school kids from Nagawa Meti who were able to come and join us for a week-long uh, series of activities and events around what is the world's first formal twinning of archaeological sites. And those two sites were, say, Grimes Graves and the Hoshikuso Obsidian Mines in Nagawa Meti. We've been developing a number of innovative research collaborations with research partners in Japan and in Europe and in North America. Um, we have a number of universities and museums who we've been working closely with over the years, in particular um, along the longest river drainage of the Japanese archipelago, the Shinano and the Chikuma rivers, which are home to these rather wonderful flame pots that we see here from about 5,000 years ago, about the same age as Stonehenge. And we've also been doing some collaborations um, in the area of burial mounds, um, in particular looking at the large Kofun, the ancient burial mounds of the early Japanese state, and working with archaeologists from a number of universities in the Kansai region, Kyoto, Osaka and Nara, and also archaeologists from Hiroshima, a little further afield and we've been able to work with them in conjunction with the Japanese section at the British Museum, which houses one of the best collections, one of the best archive collections of uh, Kofun period material outside Japan, the so-called William Gowland collection. With all of these research collaborations, we're thinking to the future as well, and how we can be further developing this. And one area that we're very keen to develop are some postgraduate taught programs in Japanese arts, cultures and heritage to include archaeology. And this is a program that we're hoping to kick off in 2018, leading into 2019. As we're aware that Japan is very much going to be the focus of global attention in 2019 and 2020, with the Rugby World Cup in 2019 and the Tokyo Olympics in 2020. And we, through all the programs that we've been talking about, we're hoping to increase the traffic between Japan and Britain. Um, traffic which actually has its origins back in the 19th century when some of the founding fathers of Japanese archaeology, people like Tsuboi Shoguro, the first professor of archaeology at the University of Tokyo, and uh, Hamada Kosaku, who established the first department of archaeology in Japan, both of those people studied in London back in the late 19th century and early 20th century. So there are connections that take British and Japanese archaeology right back to their very roots. And we're now looking to work with our research partners and our outreach partners and our various communities in Britain and Japan who have got this interest in archaeology to create some new programs and so bring the wonders of Japanese archaeology to new generations. Another element that we're looking at is to try and ascertain what the international significance, what the global significance of some of our wonderful British archaeological sites are, in particular some of the wonderful sites that we've got here in East Anglia. And to do that we're sort of looking at these sites through, trying to look at them through Japanese eyes or through a Japanese lens. And over the years we've been able to introduce a number of our Japanese colleagues to some of these sites. And in the future, I think we're looking to see how we can broaden that out into perhaps more of a, a research and teaching program and welcoming visits by groups of Japanese students from a number of Japanese universities and other researchers to see how we can really be building on these connections to enhance our understanding of these sites um, by putting them in a truly international perspective.